I know what you're thinking. Did Cuomo do it again? Let's read and find out. NYPD arrest Subway Ripper. Covered in blood after he stabbed two homeless men to death and wounded two others in 14-hour rampage as 500 more cops are sent in to patrol trains. Rampage maybe had something to do with Cuomo and that story that I talked about yesterday. Did Cuomo do it? We still don't know. Two people were stabbed to death on opposite ends of a subway line in NYC. New York police believe same assailant is behind those and two other slashings. Subway rider, 67-year-old male, was wounded in stabbing on Friday before noon. Twelve hours later, a man was fatally stabbed in the neck, torso, in southern Queens. Two hours later, a woman, 44, was found unconscious after she was stabbed. Woman found in subway station on opposite end of A-Line in Upper Manhattan. Minutes later, another man, 43, was wounded in stabbing in 181st Street Station, this guy put in some work. Jesus. The suspect was reportedly arrested in Upper Manhattan, just blocks from where the bloody rampage began, and he is in custody at the 34th Precinct in Washington Heights. The fatal stabbings took place on opposite ends of the A subway line, which connects the Inwood section of Upper Manhattan with Rockaway, Queens. NYPD Commissioner Dermot Shea announced on Saturday that a surge of 500 additional cops for the department's transit bureau would be immediately deployed across the city. The wounded victims were reportedly helping police identify the assailant earlier on Saturday. This is a transit bureau here, so defunding, that was the thing. We don't know if that particular department, the transit bureau, was impacted by those budget cuts in any way. Additional police seen on the A-line here. During a news conference on Saturday, police told reporters that the violent stabbing spree started around 11.20 a.m. on Friday. That's when a 67-year-old man was stabbed by an assailant at the 181st Street A-Line subway station. The victim is expected to survive, according to police. All right, that's excellent, excellent. He told cops that his attacker had shouted, I am going to kill you, before he was stabbed in the right knee and left buttock. The buttock. The next attack took place before midnight when authorities found a man stabbed to death in his seat on the A train at the Mott Avenue station in Far Rockaway, Queens. So the next attack took place at midnight, they say. We go back up here, 11.20 a.m. on Friday. So a 12-hour time frame in between the first and second stabbings. The victim died of stab wounds to his neck and torso. Oh, damn, that's no good. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Just two hours later, a 44-year-old was found unconscious after she was stabbed while riding the A-train at the 207th Street station in Upper Manhattan. The woman was rushed to a nearby hospital where she was pronounced dead. Whew. Just a few minutes later, a 43-year-old man was randomly stabbed at the A subway station on West 181st Street in Manhattan. The man was rushed to hospital where he's listed in stable condition. The slashing spree sparked a massive manhunt and an outcry for safer subways. Officers were seen patrolling subway stations across the city, looking for the alleged suspect before the man was arrested. The NYPD plans to deploy an additional 865 officers to patrol the subway system on Monday, though officials had said earlier. On Saturday, they believed the attacker to be possibly a Hispanic male, standing at a height of around five foot tall and wearing a face mask. So a five foot tall Hispanic Hmm, interesting. Three of these incidents appear to be connected, and the detective bureau is looking into the possibility that all four could have been committed by one individual, Transit Chief Kathleen O'Reilly told reporters. So possibly that could explain the gap. That possibly that 11 a.m. stabbing, approximately, was done by somebody totally different. It just seems kind of odd, right, that there would be a 12-hour gap in between stabbings, and then all of a sudden he just lost his marbles and hit up three people within minutes. We'll have to wait, obviously, for more details to come out. She says here, we will work tirelessly to bring the individual or individuals to justice. Daily Mail has reached out to the NYPD for further comment. Since the onset of the pandemic, there has been an uptick in violent incidents inside the largely desolate subway stations, as ridership has plummeted 
due to fears of getting infected. So interesting, right? It's more desolate, but yet violent incidents are increasing. Interesting, you wouldn't think that to be the case. Transit workers have been demanding that the 24-hour subway schedule be resumed after several reported being assaulted during the overnight hours when the trains are shut down for 19 cleanings. The union representing Metropolitan Transportation Authority workers who operate the city's public buses and subways are assaulted, harassed, spit on, and in severe cases, nearly killed by assailants and largely empty stations. In November, the NYPD said that it would add around 200 cops on its patrols of subway stations after a series of disturbing incidents. Noel Quintana, 61, was on a Manhattan subway that was taking him to work in Harlem last Wednesday when an unknown attacker kicked his bag and then whipped out a box cutter and slashed him across the face from ear to ear. Last Thursday morning, another woman was pushed in front of a train at Union Station in Lower Manhattan. Jeez. The woman in her 40s miraculously survived by rolling between the tracks as the train passed over her. She obviously had thought ahead, and somebody like me who doesn't live there or take the subway probably, I probably would have been, would have been pancake city for me. A suspect was held at the scene by transit workers and is being charged with attempted murder, felony assault, and reckless endangerment. His last known address is in Michigan, and he is believed to be homeless. According to the NYPD, there were 16 subway pushing incidents in all of 2019. So far this year, there have been just as many. On Christmas Eve, Kumar 70, an MTA station worker, was pushed onto subway tracks at the Nassau Avenue G subway station stop in Brooklyn around 3 a.m. Kumar was lucky to be alive, though he suffered a fractured spine and head injuries. Fortunately, he missed the electrified third rail. The alleged assailant, Jonathan Martinez, 27, was trying to get onto one of the trains, which are only available for first responders and transit workers during the overnight hours. Martinez was charged with assault, harassment, and reckless endangerment. On August 5th, they give another example here, Reggie Frazier, a father of three who lost his 21-year-old daughter last year to the 19, was sweeping up at the Dickman Street subway stop in the Inwood section of Upper Manhattan around 2.15 a.m., more than an hour after the trains last stopped running for the day. Yo, man, no trains after 1 a.m., Frazier, 61, told a man who wandered into the station, according to the city. According to Frazier, the man responded, Shut the F up, I'll punch you in the face. I said, I don't want to fight you, man, I'm at work, Frazier told the city, but he grabbed a crate and started swinging. The man attacked Frazier with a milk crate, as Frazier tried to escape, he tore a tendon in his right knee. Damn. Since that day, he has not returned to work. I wasn't sworn into this job to take beatdowns, he said. We're not laughing at this situation, but my man has a sense of humor, at least. The man, identified as Frazier's assailant, 36-year-old Raymond Garrido, was arrested and charged. Wow, there's that one whew, from above that I read. The gentleman who got knifed ear to ear. They often exaggerate stuff in the news and... It wasn't totally ear to ear. I mean, wow, he got him bad. Jeez. I had no idea it was going to be like that. It looks like this is the individual here that stabbed Mr. Quintana. Louis Vuitton face mask. Nice. So that's the gist of that story, everyone. Let's take a quick look at some comments. Thank God Nick Cannon told us. <laughs> Melanin makes one more empathetic. Oh, yeah. Disgruntled. Joe supporter. If you ain't black, don't worry, bud. Warren Wilhelm. We'll try to have you back on the street by lunch. A Mexican dwarf? DACA candidate. The suspects never really change, do they? Weighing in from Canada with that one. Ba-boom. But they don't arrest a man responsible for the murder of 14,000 care home residents, and they slip the old butcher in there somehow. You change this guy's skin color. Then what you would have is front page news for weeks instead of no mention of race here. I wonder why that is. I'm sure he'll get a slap on the wrist and be back on the streets again. VP Harris should bail him out. Mm, another zinger. Crowd's coming clutch with this one. I guess the police found this perp. The rest of the copy and paste article adds nothing. DM is still running copy and paste. Trump bashing articles. Okay, we got it. Cattle cars running through open sewers. Issues here seem to be aimed more at the workers. 
individuals there that are overnight workers cleaning up, keeping the trains clean, stuff like that. It it's kind of fucked up, right? You go to your job like that and night shifts rough and you're really hung out to dry in a way. And you just have these homeless people flowing in and out of the station. There's a lot of attacks that are on the rise. I'm not going to act like every homeless person is like that, but where's the protection for these individuals, right? NYC, what can you say? All right, that's all I got. Short one for today, everybody. Take care, be well, and have a good weekend.